Today we are going to take a look at one of my favorite compressor plugins, the Arouser by Empirical Labs. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. I hope you are safe and well. Now, before we jump in, if you are new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel, click notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and like this video if you enjoyed the video. Note that I am giving away a license of the Arouser plugin. So if you want to join and uh, participate into the giveaway, all the details are going to be down below. Okay, now the arouser is made by Empirical Labs, which is uh, the company that makes the Distressor Compressor, which is one of the most popular compressor out there. You probably saw those compressors before in studios or other videos people having those uh, set up in their rack mounts, they are very popular. And the D arouser is based on the actual distressor. It's not like a 100% emulation of the distressor, but it is based on the, uh, the distressor. So we're gonna take a look at all of those parameters um, in this video. I'm also gonna test the D arouser on, uh, uh, on a snare, a bass, and a vocal also. If you would like to see a more accurate uh, emulation of the uh, distressor, you can look at the uh, UAD distressor plugin, which has been designed by Empirical Labs and UAD uh, together. Uh, this is a more, I would say, faithful emulation of the original distressor. Uh, but what we have with the, the arouser is a more of a unique thing. Now, the arouser is based on the distressor, but has a bit more interesting features uh, compared to the original distressor. So if we look at the GUI uh, of the uh, arouser, it is similar, if we look at those big knobs on top, it is a bit similar to the original distressor as far as the knobs goes. Um, so we have the input, um, so it is a fixed threshold. So the more input you add to the compressor, the more gain reduction you will get. Uh, then we have the attack and release. Uh, the attack goes down to 0 0.05 milliseconds, which is quite fast. And then we have the release uh, and also the output. Now, if we look at... Um, uh, at the top right of the compressor, we have the clip LED uh, where it's written bad. So if that LED lights up, that means your signal is way too hot. You're gonna have to bring down the input of the compressor to balance that out. Then we have the ratio. Now the ratio goes from one to one, to rivet. Now, if we compare with the original distressor, uh, the arouser will have an eight to one ratio and also a 1.5 to one ratio that the original distressor doesn't have. Now, rivet is an intense ratio parameter found on the arouser. We have the equivalent, of course, on the original distressor and it is called nuke. Okay, so nuke and rivet are about the same. Uh, then let's go down to the attack modification. Uh, parameter. Now, this is a very nice one. Uh, basically, what this is going to do, it's going to fine tune the attack curve of the compression envelope. So if I bring that up, that will slow down the initial slope of the attack. Okay, so this is a very cool way to add a bit more punch in a more analog way, I would say. Um, so it has a very cool vibe to it. Then we have soft clipping. Now soft clipping will add some saturation to the compressed signal. And the cool thing about this option is that you can dive that into the value that you wish. Um, um, so instead of being fixed values like we have on the original distressor. So this is very, very cool. Um, we're going to play with that later on. Uh, then if we go down, we have the detector sidechain EQ. Uh, on the left, we have the high pass filter. So basically, if I bring that up to 100 hertz, um, everything below 100 hertz will not be detected by the detector of the compressor. We actually found uh, that parameter on a lot of compressors. Now, if you want to know more about all of those settings and you're a bit not too familiar with uh, uh, what compression is, you can download my free guide to compression. Okay, I'm going to leave the link down below also. And that guide will help you to understand the fundamentals of compression and all those different parameters. Okay, so let's continue here. Now, the detector 
supply chain EQ. Uh, this is very nice. Also, it's all part of that uh, main detector side chain. Um, this is not something that I use a lot, to be honest with you, but it can be practical. So if you want to focus on one specific frequency to be detected by the compressor detector, uh, this is where you'll be able to, uh, to work that out. Uh, you can add or boost uh, the, that frequency uh, to be detected or not by the compressor. Uh, so that can be useful. Then we have the blend parameter, which is parallel compression, basically. So that will blend the dry signal with the compressed signal. And if we click on E, we also have a dry signal trim, and that can be also useful. Um, so just click on the E to access the dry level trim. Uh, and then all of those parameters can be bypassed, and this is very cool. And that is new to the latest version of the arouser, uh, to the version 2.3. So for example, if you want to add some saturation to your signal, and you want to monitor that signal with and without that specific effect, you can just click on soft clipping on top and that will bypass the saturation in this case. So you get a bit more precision when doing some A-B testing. Uh, same for attack modification. All those parameters basically can be bypassed, which is very nice. And uh, the detector side chain, uh, the, parameter, the parametric EQ can be bypassed separately from the high pass filter, which is also very cool. If we look closer, we have blue dots right beside the knobs, and those represent the default value when loading the plugin. So this is basically what we get with the arouser as far as all the parameters goes. Now let's try this out on my mix, a mix that I have here. Now this song has already been mixed uh, with Cubase plugins, okay, all stock plugins. So uh, what I did here, I just removed a couple of plugins and replaced them with uh, the arouser just to show you how that sounds like. So uh, let's have a quick listen to what I have here. Day and night we go along, go for what we're longing for. I know time is drawing near. Okay, so this is a song that you probably heard before. I used it on a couple of videos. It's a song that I released myself uh, with the project I work on. In contrast, I'm going to leave the link on top if you want to listen to the full mix uh, of this song. Note that I'm also working on the mixing course uh, made entirely in Cubase with the Cubase plugins only. More on that later on. So make sure you are on my mailing list so you get updated on the release date. Okay, so now uh, let's focus on the snare. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bypass all the room effects and reverbs of that snare and just let's just solo the snare group which is a combination of several snares. Okay, let's play with the arouser. I'm just going to activate that plugin. And by default, if I just uh, play that with the default settings, I think that was the default setting. There you go. Okay, now let's start working with arouser. That's pretty cool. I kind of like what that does. Let's do it before and after. All right, in the context of the mix. Day and night we go along. Go for what we're longing for. I know time is drawing near. Time for I'm going to select rivet and we're going to just overdo it, okay? So I'm going to solo my snare channel. Bring my attack lower. Release super fast. So I get a lot of sustain out of that sound and not a lot of attack. This way, it's not usable. I'm not going to use it this way. What I'm going to do, though, is to use the mix uh, knob right here. So I'm using the compressor in parallel to the dry signal. Nice. 
Nice. That adds a lot of life and sustain to that snare. Day and night we go along, go for what we're longing for. I know time is drawing near, time for facing all we fear. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Let's add a bit more attack modification. Nice. Okay, I'm going to bring back all of my reverbs. Nice. Okay, I'm going to keep it this way. Now let's listen to the bass and uh, check what we can do here. So um, I have a bus group for my bass because I have two bass tracks. One is the line recording and the other one is a recording from Sansamp. Okay, so the bass player actually had a Sansamp unit where he recorded his bass also in parallel to the dry signal. Um, so this is what I have here. So this is the distorted signal and my clean line signal. So I already have some light compression on this uh, bass and not too much, a couple of dBs of gain reduction. I'm going to leave that as is, but what I'm going to do here is to add a rouser on that bass group channel. Day. That's pretty cool. Let's listen in context. Cool, I love what it does. That saturation soft clipping parameter is quite nice. Now let's look at the vocal, the lead vocal. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna unmute my group and uh, I'm gonna mute my, I have like some parallel uh, compression going on already on the vocal, so I'm gonna bypass this and only work with a rouser. Day and night we go along, go forward, we're longing for. I know time is drawing near, time for facing all we fear. I don't know if we will find truth before we cross the line. Silently, I'm screaming loud. Okay, that is pretty cool. Let's listen in context. Day and night we go along. Go forward, we're longing for. I know time is drawing near. Time for facing. Yeah, again, the soft clipping saturation option gives me a bit more edge to this vocal. I really like this. So this is my take on it. I love this plugin. I love working with it. It has a lot of cool features like, of course, the soft clipping, the attack modification, which also is very nice. So you can work with this plugin on several different sources like drums, bass, guitars, vocals, um, even on the mix bus. That can also be very cool uh, with that one uh, 1.5 to 1 ratio um, that is useful if you want to create a VCA type compressor on the mix bus you can do so with the arouser uh, so this is the cool thing about this plugin it's very versatile and cool to work with um, now the only thing that I would add to this plugin that I would love to see maybe on a future version is the 10 to 1 opto 
uh, feature that we have on the original Distressor. On the original Distressor, the 10 to 1 ratio acts like a Nopto compressor, which is quite nice. I would love to see this on the arouser at some point. So you can download and try the arouser for 15 days entirely free. Now, if you want to work with the arouser, you will need to have an iLock key. If you already have one like me, that's not a problem. But if you don't already have an iLock key, that can be a con on working with this plugin. Now you can try the plugin for 15 days entirely free. So you can download that directly from the Empirical Labs website. I'm gonna leave the link down below. All right, my friends, so this is gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your questions and comments down below. Share, like, and subscribe if you're new here. Don't forget that there's the giveaway of the Arouser plugin that is going on at the moment. All details are down below. Until next time, take care, be safe, and see you.